ever tried to can your own mandarin oranges? You know, the little cuties, the kind that you see in the store? But you got, couldn't get all that white stuff off? Well, guess what? Today, I'm going to show you how you can do this too. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I love to do home preservation of all sorts. I have my own dairy animals. I like to cook from scratch. And really, you just never know what I'm going to do. So I invite you to go ahead and push that subscribe button if you're not already part of the Farm Wife Fam so you can see what kind of craziness I'm going to get up to next. Today's video is extra special because I am participating in the Canuary collaboration. Lisa over at Sutton's Days is our host, and boy, has she put together some really great content creators for all of you. She'll have a playlist with all the great videos, so every day for the month of January, you're going to get a new great safe canning recipe that you can use in your kitchen. There's going to be water bath canning, steam canning, uh, pressure canning, all sorts of canning recipes. All right, well, let's get over to the kitchen and I'm going to show you my secret on how I make my kids their favorite canned fruit, just like what you can buy at the store. I still have some orange segments on my shelf, so I'm not going to make a big batch today, but my kids love it and I was at the store and I found what they call Mandy's. And they're the little tiny mandarin oranges. Mandarin oranges, say how you wish. I went to a different store and I wanted to show you the difference. These are the cuties that we're used to seeing at the store. And they're the super easy, peel easy oranges. But these teeny tiny ones are hard for me to find. And so when I do, I try to grab a bag and preserve them up. We've gotten into them, we've eaten a few. I mean, you've got to test it to make sure it's gonna be good fruit that you like, right? So we've eaten a handful of them, but let's can the rest. And it doesn't get any more simple than this, guys. You take your clean hands and you just start peeling off the orange. But you notice there is all this, what they call pith in there. Fruit naturally has these enzymes in them, and it is a protein that will bind together, and that's what keeps your fruit, or your citrus segments together. Sometimes there's a little bit of a core in there even, and you can see it's kind of stringy, and this, this isn't fun to eat. And when you're eating these things fresh, you don't really notice it so much. But when you can it, you don't want that in there. And you can try as hard as you want to pull all this off. And I could spend a long time doing this. And I'll end up with a product like this. Which isn't bad. But when you buy it from the store, it's going to be more like this. My trick, friends, is this stuff right here. It's called peptic enzyme. And I have bought this in bulk. And what you need to do is I've got myself a quart of water. And to that, I'm going to add an, just an eighth of a teaspoon of this stuff. It doesn't take much. So one of these jars off Amazon will last you a long time. I'm going to go ahead and just give this a quick stir and we're going to start out with just this much because we don't have that many to do and all I'm going to do is I'm going to plop these orange segments right into this water. And I'll just keep peeling and plopping until I get through the bag. Now, you can do a lot. If this is something that you find and you want to do a massive amount of these, absolutely. Just get yourself a bigger container, use more water, and more of the enzyme. You'll find this in the section of where people will 
do like winemaking because this is used to help with the tannins in wine and to help break down the skin of the grapes. But today we are using it on our citrus. If you've ever gone to like a fancy restaurant and you have citrus segments and they don't have this on it and you don't know how in the world they did that, this is what they did. I'm gonna work on these and I'm gonna get through this bag and I'll bring you back and tell you all about the next step. Our orange segments are now done and all I have to do is pop on the lid, put this in the refrigerator. Super easy, but I'm telling you, this is basically the hardest part of the whole project. Now, we're gonna let those set in the refrigerator for several hours. A little longer that they set, the better product you're gonna get. Maximum of two days. Do not overdo it, okay? So, I'm gonna go work on some other stuff on the farm, and I'll see you back when it's time to start canning. And because I'm a no-waste kind of kitchen, I saved all these peels. And you're probably wondering, why? What are you gonna do with that? Well, no, I'm not going to can them, but you can save these and I could throw them in a pot of water with maybe a couple sticks of cinnamon, or I can leave them out to air dry just like this, turn them into potpourri, or I could dehydrate and freeze dry them and powder them and use them in soap making, or I could, you know, leave them in small bits to do exfoliating scrubs. I'm a no waste kitchen and I like to use every last bit of everything I get. Okay, we're back and it's been about 12-ish hours uh, since I started this project. I wanted to let those segments set in the refrigerator and we are going to um, can these babies up. But first I wanted to let you know that I did a lot of research on this and if you go, you can get you can get fantastic books from USDA or Ball, they're safe canning books, but you can also go on websites and so I went to the USDA safe canning website and to do orange segments it doesn't really matter what size you use, you're going to can for 10 minutes. But today we're going to do a little twist because as I was doing research, I found out that you can actually can them in the juice, which I have not done yet. And I'm excited that together today we can do that. I'm going to probably go ahead and go with the 15 minute time, although it didn't say it in the directions to add that extra time. I think we should just err on side of safety and go with the juice time versus the segment time and I wanted to make sure I got that said today so welcome back we have let our orange segments set let's take a closer look here and they've just been floating in this peptic enzyme water mixture and it's not very cloudy a lot of times like winemakers will use this and it'll take the cloudiness out of for their wine and so I, I'm seeing though that the segments look like some of the pith is starting to come off. But what we want to do first is I'm going to go ahead and take this and we're going to go ahead and dump it in here and we're going to give this a quick rinse. Now, if you want to put on gloves to do this part, you can. But me, I choose to grab the sink and the soap and give them a good scrub and make sure I have clean hands because that's what we do in the kitchen. Clean hands, clean utensils. Now, I want to wash our orange segment. So we're gonna pour this out. And we're just gonna kinda shake and rinse these. And you can see some of the pith is already coming off. Pour them back into this with some nice cold water. And then I'm going to rinse this off. Get in here and we're going to kind of mess with these segments again. And what you're wanting to do, as you can see, each of these segments, I'm pulling off all these tiny strings. 
Isn't that lovely? Let's give this another quick rinse. One more time here. Look at all this. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Go ahead and rinse that off again. Give this another good scrub. No rinse. Look at that. Look at that. And then for a third time, we're going to go ahead and put these back in here. Okay, so while I've got my orange segments sitting for just a minute, I want to get a few things started. I've got my lids in my pot, and I'm going to go ahead and turn that on here on the stove. Now, depending on what type of canning lids you use, you may or may not need to do this step. Make sure you're reading your directions on this, friends because that compound, if you have a company like say four jars that has a thicker compound, they require or they suggest that you go ahead and warm that up in a pan on the stove before you can with it. I'm gonna tell you, if you're having silly failures, this is a very helpful tip, especially if you're gonna be water bath or steam canning like we are today. The next thing I want to do is I've got another pan and I'm going to put some orange juice in here. We need to bring this up to at least room temperature. Um, you might even go as far as it is suggested up to 195 degrees. But let me tell you guys, you need to use orange juice that is 100% juice. You can even make your own orange juice and use this if you want. I'm excited about trying this and seeing what flavor it makes a difference on when I open up these jars later. In the past, I've always used either a water, which I wouldn't suggest. I think it needs a little bit of sugar. I'm afraid that when you put it with water, it just dilutes it and they don't keep their flavor. Something about the sugar, in my opinion, it is not necessary to be safe for canning, but in my opinion, it does give better flavor. I prefer to go closer to a light to medium syrup. Back to the segments. This next part depends on how picky you want to be. I like to go over these one more time before putting them in the jars. And I wanna just make sure I'm pulling, see? You wanna make sure you're pulling off all, all those, that pith and the stringy membranes. I don't want any of that in there if I can avoid it. So I do take the time to individually inspect these to make sure it's off there. But if you don't want to, that's okay. At this point, you've probably gotten the majority of it off of there anyway, but it also gives me one last opportunity to make sure, you know, is this really the quality that I want? Was this a little drier? Did it get broken in the process of cleaning it? You know, this, this is one last chance to make sure that you're providing your family with the freshest, best fruit and sometimes there's a little left on there and sometimes like now I've gotten fine but look here this one it's being a little bit of a stickler and it's not one to come off so I'm gonna have to persuade it just a little bit here and there it goes I'll see you back when this is done okay so our lids have boiled our juice has come to 190 degrees I have picked through the segments but I had to show you I'm going to give these one more rinse, but look, can you see all that? Can you see that sediment in there? I even found a seed. So I think this is a step that you'll probably want to take the time to make. Now we get to start filling our jars. I decided to use half pints, and so normally I would tell you to do your pint size um, processing recommendation, but it's the same time, so it doesn't matter. I need to get the fruit at a half inch, so I need to find my little mark, and 
Let's see here. I think that's about where we're at. Yes. Okay. Fill a few of these jars together. It won't take us long at all. I thought this was closer to the size that you get at the store, typically for recipes. So I thought that this would be the size I would use today. I think I might have one or two segments too many. Okay, make sure you're looking at this correctly because I originally was doing three quarter, but I want a half inch. There's a quarter, there's a half. The juice, when you heat it, it kind of separates. That's okay. That happens. I have actually canned orange juice before. I want to debubble. Looks like my headspace is a bit off. So I'm going to take some of this orange juice out. And now I'm going to recheck my headspace. Perfect. Right at a half inch. Okay. So now we will just finish these up. Make sure you debubble. I think I did it to the headspace again. That's okay. That's why we check it every time. bit more it looks like and I'm a clean up as you go kind of gal so I'm gonna wipe all this down clean all this up and then I'll bring you back to show you the next step move over my steam canner turn on my oven next I'm gonna grab a paper towel and I'm gonna put some vinegar on it because I don't want any of this sticky sugary mix to be stuck on my lids See, there's a little orange juice that got spilled on there, and I don't want that to inhibit my seal. Because I got the orange on there the first time, I'm going to do it a second time. Probably not necessary, but I would rather not. I'd rather be safe than sorry. There's only four jars in this bat, so we know. There would have been more of these if we wouldn't have got snack happy, but I am excited to do a small batch and have these on the shelf anyway. I'm going to take our lids, fingertip tight to the rings. jars into my steam canner. And then at this point, all I need to do is let the dial gauge go to the proper zone for my area, which is green. And I always say green means go. So if I haven't told you already, one of the fantastic prizes that you could win by participating as a viewer in this collaboration is a steam canner. Oh, wait a minute. No, not this one. This one's mine. Lisa's got one similar to this that she's going to be giving away. If you want more information about that, go over to Lisa's channel and check out the playlist, watch all the videos, make those comments to enter to win for the drawing that will be given away on January 31st. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of other prizes to be given away too. It's going to be an amazing giveaway. I'll be there. In your booklet, you'll find how to figure out what zone you are and what color you need to be for your elevation. 
and then you will know when to start your timer. If you start to see steam coming from your canner, don't be nervous. There is, as you can see, there is a vent hole here. But if you start seeing lots of vents from other places or it starts to jiggle and rock, that's when you might consider, did I turn it up a little too high? Do I need to turn it down a little? A little bit of rocking is normal, but when it starts going crazy, you know you better turn it down. Okay, set the timers. We're ready to process. Now, if you don't have a steam canner, don't be intimidated by this. You can absolutely water bath this. I just have the steam canner. I enjoy using it for things like jams and jellies and fruits and juices. Something with a shorter water bath time, this is my go-to. It just uses a lot less water and it's not as heavy. It's easier for me to maneuver in the kitchen. But absolutely, you could water bath this if you choose. Okay, my timer went off. So I'm going to shut this off. And what I like to do is I just like to tilt it just a little bit. And I'm going to let this cool and kind of let it... I don't like to shock my jars. And so if I let this kind of set for like 5 to 10 minutes, then we'll pull these jars out. I can't wait to see what they look like, guys. I'm so excited. Do not put this lid on a hot burner. Okay, you do not want to do that. They're very ten temperature sensitive. But here, let's check this out. Looky, looky. Doesn't this look lovely? I am excited to have done this with you, friends. Here they are. Orange segments in juice. We've done it. We have canned mandarin oranges in orange juice together did you hear that pop always love it when they pop once these have cooled for a good 12 hours maybe even up to 24 then i'm going to rinse them off and put them on my shelf so that we can enjoy them later this year i really enjoyed that you coming along with me in my kitchen today i hope that you were able to glean something new Thank you, Lisa, for inviting me to be a part of Canuary. I have loved working with all of you ladies. If you found value in the content you saw today, make sure that you share this out. Bye for now. See you next time. Another pop.